Hello everyone, welcome back for more Let's Play You Don't Know Jack the Ride. Hopefully with less embarrassment to me this time. I'll take them all, rats. In a sense, maybe. Hello, ready to ride? All right then. How many contestants are there? One player? Good. Competition only slows down the game. Are you a first time rider? Splendid. Glad you had the courage to play again. <laughs> I need you to type in your name now. Come now. Is it so hard to type in your name? No. But you come up with better ones. What? No name? Hmm. Let me give you a new one. You seem like a scrag. If you feel like buzzing, use the letter B. These little elevator jobs always end too soon. Oh well, see you at the bottom. I still have expected to battle against Satan for my soul or something when I get down there. It's time for the show where high culture and pop culture collide. You don't know Jack. The ride is brought to you by Cluburbia, suburban community living with only the people you like. And now, here he is, the most dangerous man in trivia, Schmitty. Hey there, how you doing? No, oh, I don't know. What do you want to do today? You want to just hang out at the mall? Okay. So, we don't need no Mall of America amusement park. We got a ride right here. Hang on tight. Hit the buzzer for the value on this one. Up next. But suburbia is our cultural wasteland. Okay, say yeah. you're a mother in the suburbs with three screaming kids and no help from your husband. Isn't that always the way? Well, bottle up your anger and imagine this. You send your kids out to play in the cul-de-sac. If you translate the phrase directly into English, what should you say? Go play in the cream of the man. Go play in the long nostril. Go play in the ass of the bag. Or... Go play in the old rooster. Cul-de-sac. Sack means bag and cull means bottom, or in slang, ass. <coughs> but if you're skateboarding, be careful you don't wipe out in the ass of the bag. It would hurt. Buzz in and tell me how much the next question. The a category lot. is. Will someone please think of the suburban children? Okay, the census tells us that households in the suburbs have two parents, a house, two cars, a dog, and 2.5 kids, right? Well, if everyone in town has just half a kid in their family, who is probably in charge? King David, King Solomon, King Arthur, or King Midas? Yeah, the one that cut things in half. King Solomon is the wise biblical king who's famous for settling a custody battle by suggesting a baby be cut in half so two different women could share it. It's a great story. Look it up. It's not a real popular custody ruling in the suburbs because, you know, it's tough to get half a kid into a good preschool these days. My score is one dollar over nine thousand. All right, buzz in and get your money's worth. Enjoy All that All right, meme. that'll work just fine. Tell me what you think of this category. Honey, I shrunk the yuppies. Step okay, on them. So first there were young urban professionals we called yuppies, right? Then there were buppies, and now we got dinks. Well, if you buy shrinky dinks, what demographic will you be coloring and then shrinking in the oven? Working unwed mothers, unemployed couples with kids, teenagers with driver's licenses, or working couples without kids? So you don't lose any sleep over it. Dink is an acronym for double income, no kids. And the shrinky part is a dink's dream. Low cost plastic surgery. I couldn't think about what the D I buzzer and try to snag the highest oh, well. you can. I knew it's NK was bump. no kids. It's roadkill. Good. What's a theme? For Remember, this when you see the item kill. that correctly connects the pair, hit your buzzer. And don't forget about yes, that I bonus round. Okay, for the episode, it's time but... to punch it. Famous dolphin and scuba footwear. Where, Where do these huh? items intersect? Oh, 
score. Things you find in an arcade. Archery equipment and discount door chain. It'd be arrow, would Which one? Target. Ah. Score. Full speed equals full blank and jousting tournament. Throttle. Or no tilt. Score. Toilet tool and person who dives from top Plunger. building. Plunger. Score. Ass of the bag. Okay. Still one extra blank and fine with plastic. Red. Yeah, pinball. Twenty years. I was just joking. Late. Score. Darn it. <coughs> Car fender and excess props. Bumper. Yeah, these are all pinball things. You know, I was just okay, kidding so when I said what arcade. What the correct answers have in common? Are they all Ford utility vehicle models? Most common suburban street names. Pinball machine term. You got it. Great. Now, tell me something. Have you heard the term video game? Let go of the 70s. Check out your What do you there. think I'm Make doing sure now? In order. And we're moving on. Never mind. I want you to hit your butt. The category is going to be <clears throat> skinny dipping is an exhibition sport. You know, most people think pool hopping is just jumping in and out of some stranger's pool and running off to the next one. But I'm telling you, it takes skill and training, like any sport. Suppose pool hopping were part of the modern pentathlon. Which of the following would Olympic athletes not do between dips in the pool? Mount a horse, fence, ride a bicycle, or shoot a pistol? Shoot a pistol? Hey, those kind of shenanigans may be fine in the city, but in suburbia, they prefer their violence to be not so violent. I thought that was only the biathlon. What do you say we check out the right answer? The modern pentathlon includes swimming, fencing, shooting, running, and riding huh. horses, not bikes. So after they jump in their neighbor's pool, they'd also be able to leave flaming bags of horse duty on their front porches. Oh, you. Well, whatever Flap floats your, your boat. We'll find out how much the next... Wow, I got about that much in my couch. This category is... Fake vomit. Get your fake vomit here. Time for the trivia. If ubiquitous novelty store Spencer Gifts had been founded by historical figure Herbert Spencer, what would its ad slogan most likely be? Bundies are only for the aristocracy. Only the fittest lava lamps will survive. All Garfield mugs were created equal. Herbert or I read Spencer. fart joke books, therefore I am. <laughs> Two-person underwear only for the aristocracy? Long live the revolution! <laughs> the correct That's answer three, is... Then. Herbert Spencer really? is the guy who coined the phrase survival of the fittest. Then Darwin huh. used it and got all famous. Darwin also likes to take credit for Spencer's classic snake popping out of the peanut can gag. Yeah, I thought that was Darwin. Oh well. Buzz in and lock on to the... I'm calling this one. <coughs> look for the gold blazers and cloven hooves. Hey, take a look at this real estate listing, will you? When you know what town the house is in, buzz in, start typing. For sale, three-story house on Long Island. At first, you won't believe your eyes. Great for those who enjoy oozing walls, restless flies, and slamming doors. Ghostly pigs, okay. Now, where's the house? I don't remember where that is. Remember the summer you read the Amityville Horror? Yeah. That Long Island Darn dream it. house with I the bleeding walls, of swarms of flies, and the little phantom pig running around, it's in Amityville. And as long as you can swing an axe, it's the perfect fixer-upper. <laughs> Work that buzzer to choose the... That looks good. Way to grab it. Try this category. At two, fruité. Okay, you know that store in the mall, Orange Julius? 
And you can get like an orange Julius or a strawberry Julius or a banana, you know, whatever freaking Julius you want. Mm -hmm. If orange Julius added even more fruits to its menu, which of these drinks could it not offer? Acorn Julius, onion Julius, tomato Julius, or pea Julius? An onion isn't a fruit, so an onion Julius would be out of the question. That's the only one that didn't grow on a tree. Onion Julius. No way! Wild scallions couldn't make me drink one of those. Did you drink, drink a scallion box, Julius? Baby. Coming at ya. Be an you interesting just got choice. Geekier. Hey, do you remember More? sitting in the orthodontist chair when you were a kid? Uh. All those elastic bands and headgear and the cruel mockery of your peers? No. Or maybe that was just me. Anyway. If you'd been forced to wear mathematical braces, what would be in your mouth? These, 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 or these? Oh, I believe we called that one the brace. These mathematical symbols are called braces. And trust me, they look really gross when they get corn stuck in them. Hit that Among buzzer other things. and grab the highest value. Very nice. <laughs> Brace yourself, my friend. It's time for Dis or Dat. Here's the category for your Dis or Dat. This is your brain on suburbia. Now, I'm going to list off seven brand names. And for each one, I'd like you to tell me if it's a type of minivan or a brand of drug. Cash in for each one huh. you get right, and you lose some cash for each one you get wrong or don't get to. You got 30 seconds to get all seven. And we're off. Astro, man or drug? Axel. No love. Silhouette. Effexor. Revia. No, that's a man, huh? And a man. Six right, one wrong. Not too shabby. Here's your current score. You feel good about that? Let's keep going. Not really. That's it's much better. That'll work. Try this category. This Rough could make it better. At the Target. Target. Hey, listen up. We're going to play a little game of darts here. Well, not really. Just... Okay, to keep score, let's say that the bullseye is worth 10 points, the ring around that is worth 9, and moving outwards, each ring is worth one less than the one inside it. You got it? How many points would you get for hitting the outermost ring in a Target Store logo? 7, 8, 9, or 10? 10? ya. Let's say. could have given you some target. cash if you picked this one. The Target logo has a bullseye and two rings. If the score goes down a point for each ring, you got eight points. I Not was counting... Ah, darn it. Baseball. I was counting the spaces. All right, darn it. And get your money's worth. You meant to do that, didn't you? Here's your category. You say acid wash, I say frosted denim. Okay, you remember how acid wash jeans used to be all the rage? All right, then. Suppose Bugle Boy introduces a new line of nitric acid wash jeans. What will be the best way to advertise them? Make your friends green with envy. Blows the pants off the competition. Become immune to bad fashion. Or wear them for a great trip. Nitric acid. What does that do? Make your friends green? No, that must be your natural odor at work. You want to see what the smart money says? Nitric acid is used in explosives, which means my jeans must be nitric acid wash, because I blew them out last week after chili night. Buzz in and tell me how much Okay, never mind. Some clues are a brush off, and well, some clues are like this one. We're going to the mall. Where's my comb? It's right in the back pocket of those tight jeans, honey. I can see the individual freaking teeth on it, okay? Okay, so the answers will have comb in them, huh? Okay.
Probably was that curry comb, wasn't it? They were really proud of that answer. Yeah, seven for seven. You really kicked your own ass there, didn't you? Well, at least I got off to a better start that time than I have lately. Good morning, everyone. Ooh. Today on Cooking with Yax, we're I'm going to make blueberry here. pancakes with the help of our friend anyway, Sparky. Anyway, mm. take care, Doesn't folks. That sound good, I will Sparky? see you guys back next Sparky's time for going more. Sparky's to start us off by mixing Enjoy the batter. Enjoy the commercials. Why don't you start with the eggs, Sparky? Well, it looks like Sparky has mashed the eggs into a sloppy mess. Why don't we try measuring out the flour instead? <coughs> okay. Yeah. Let's turn on the oven. Go ahead, Sparky. Uh, it looks like Sparky hit a pipe trying to turn on the oven. So we're going to evacuate the building now. See you next time on Cooking with Yax. Come on, Sparky. No, Sparky. We don't eat the matches. Sparky! You work hard for your money. At Davidson Bank, we believe your bank should work hard for your money, too. That's why we specialize in turning ordinary, middle-class people like yourself into multi-catrillionaires. Just listen. I started off with a $300 savings account, and two years later, my net worth is approximately $8.2 gazillion. We turned our life savings of $85 over to Davidson Bank, and believe it or not, we now have $16.9 a billion dollars. I, I found a buck fifty on the floor of the subway. I took it to Davidson's bank and huh, here I am, a multi billionaire I made 48 patrillion dollars. I made 200 ooplitillion dollars. Can you believe it? A wazillion dollars. I'm worth eight and a half kukla billion dollars. 39 gorgonzillion dollars. Let Davidson Bank help you achieve your goals. We guarantee you'll increase your net worth by one scamillion dollars in the first year or you'll get half your money back in Davidson Bank. You'll make money, and we're not just making that up. This week on Renacops. Yeah, you know, I have a girl here who shoplifted some pens. Renacops takes on the mean corridors of Jackson Outlet Mall. It's summer vacation, so the mall's just packed with kids. Hey, I saw that. You want to open that bag? Did you pay for that? <laughs> the two, three male perpetrators. Ah, oh, they're in the arcade. Never find him in there. Hey, did you just throw that candy wrapper down? How about a garbage can, young lady? I've got two sets of teens here having shopping cart races. Ooh. I'm hit! I'm down! Man down! Back up! Renacops, what they gonna do? Next week on Round and Round and Round and Round and Round Table, Drs. Alan Germ and Gerald Meatbottom discuss the controversial new sleep-inducing therapy for insomnia sufferers, getting up and getting up a glass of water. But so much is unknown about the effects of getting up and getting a glass of water. There are dangers of spillage, broken glass, water supply. I mean, what do they do with the water once they have it? Well, we advise they drink it. Although, we found that handing it to a family member has produced some positive results. Watch as our panelists discuss this controversial new sleep aid and similar therapies. Some of your more irresponsible colleagues are now prescribing other more radical treatments like sitting up and having a ham sandwich or even running around with a plate of jello. Well, we certainly wouldn't support that kind of behavior because of the risks involved, especially to children. Tune in for Get Up and Get Yourself a Glass of Danger, Saturday on Round and Round and Round and Round and Round Table. Hey, Bob. What are you doing sitting at your computer staring at that uh, screensaver? Shh. It's not a screensaver. It's Big Buck Blast, a new simulated hunting game. 
Well, how long you been sitting there? Uh, 14 hours, 23 minutes. Seen anything yet? No, not, not yet. Sounds kind of boring. It'll be worth it as soon as I get one clean shot. Huh. Yeah, move over. Got another beer? Yeah, and help, help yourself. Hi, I'm Bert. You don't know me, well, not by name, but you're familiar with my handiwork, as are Madonna, Jodie Foster, and Princess Stephanie of Monaco. If you're a successful single woman who would like to know what it's like to cradle a baby in your arms without a doting lower-income father around, then give me a call. A few minutes later, I'll be right over with a small jar full of Bert juice. I'm a healthy guy, I ain't ugly. Give me 50 bucks, and I'll be gone. Single? Famous? Want to be a mother? Give Bert a call today at 1-800-OH-BABY. That's 1-800-O-BABY. Hey, you can even keep the turkey baster. Think of me on the holidays. I thought about holding the door open for her, but when I looked down at my bracelet, I thought, what would Satan do? So I slammed the door in her face and bit the heads off all the lab rats. It's been three days, Bob. When is Big Buck Blatt's gonna do something? Shh. I think I see something. <laughs> <laughs> you shot a cow. I could have sworn it was a deer. Three days and you shot a cow. Shut up. That Big Buck's coming. I know he is. You really think so? He's got to. It said it would on the box. Oh, well, then I can wait too. Hand me the deer scent. Big Buck Blast, the simulated hunting game with all of the tedium without any of the fresh air or sunshine, is available at Buster's Bait Shop and Computer Emporium.